Hi everyone, so today I thought I would do this video because I realized that I've bought quite a lot of palettes this year because eyeshadow is my weakness and I haven't talked about the majority of them on my channel. So I thought I would rank all the palettes that I've purchased from worst to best for this year. So that's only going to include palettes that I've purchased with my own money. I'm not going to include any palettes that I was given or gifted or anything like that, which helps because I have already a massive list. Now I have been thinking about this video for a very long time because I actually had to rack my brain as to how I was going to do this. Now in terms of how I decided to rank the palettes, I looked at things like quality was pretty much the number one factor for me. Um, the color story, how often I've used it and wanted to actually gravitate towards the palette because I've got so many. So I feel like that is a like that is a big positive sign when I'm actually using a palette because I have so many choices. And then also price, but not in the sense of, you know, value for money, but more of a, I feel like I spent my money wisely kind of view because it's really up to you to decide whether you think it's worth it for you. But for me, you know, when I have ranked some of these palettes, I have ranked them low because they might have been expensive and I just don't think that it meets the same kind of caliber as other palettes around that price point. So that's more of what I'm talking about. So we're gonna start with the worst and I actually, funnily enough, I found it a lot easier to start from the bottom because I knew immediately which palettes was gonna be in my bottom list, my, uh, dislike list and can you guess which ones I really didn't like these addiction palettes um, I just feel like they look gorgeous and I was just so surprised with the quality the quality of these are really just not up to par this quality reminds me of drugstore quality like if this was a Maybelline palette I'd be like fine fair enough but it's addiction addiction is an expensive high-end brand in Japan I've tried their singles before, their singles are fantastic. This is not the same formula. The shimmers are just so non-existent. Like, what is this? What is that? What is that? Mm -hmm. The mattes also are just chalky. They don't really show up very well. I mean, they're dry. I feel like they're, there's something wrong with the formula. They've pressed it too hard. I don't know. It's just so disappointing, especially because the packaging itself is absolutely stunning. And these were... $90 per palette um, and that includes the duty-free discount so I'm quite bitter about these I'll admit I am I have tried each of the palettes and I just don't really like them that much to the point where I actually dislike them <laughs> I can't say that I often feel like this about palettes but I feel like generally speaking when you go higher up and the higher end I feel like your expectations are higher and I feel like because Edition is a brand that I've used before, I've enjoyed before, and that these were so bad, um, they just, they definitely are at the bottom of my list. I haven't ranked each of these specifically because to me, all of these are equally as bad as each other. So yeah, that's, that's right at the bottom. Next palette is a bit of a controversial one because there were very polarizing views, but I think that, first of all, this is the first time I've ever tried the brand and that is Makeup Revolution and the Emily Noel collaboration. The color story, I like. I like that it's a fairly kind of safe palette paired back, but you've got some interesting colors as well, like Corduroy, Family, Love Tons, um, Side Hustle. You've got some interesting colors in there, but I feel like when I've applied this or when I've used this on my eyes, I just haven't had the best makeup day. If I've got any videos or clips of me where I've worn this, I'm gonna insert them on the screen. But generally, I haven't really, I haven't been very impressed with Makeup Revolution, this palette. So I'm not keen on trying other palettes from the brand. I feel like, you know, yes, you can make it work if you want to. I don't feel like this is like complete lost cause. But, you know, when I've got so many other palettes that are way more, you know, just better in quality, I just don't reach for this because I don't think the quality is really that great. I do think she's put a lot of thought into this, but I, I don't think that the Makeup Revolution eyeshadow formula, judging from this one that I've tried, is great. They're not super easy to blend. They're not, they are buildable to an extent, but I don't necessarily think that, um, I wasn't necessarily blown away. And yes, Q 
keeping in mind this is not an expensive palette. I don't feel too bitter about it <laughs> compared to the Addiction ones, but I am disappointed about it because I was expecting more. Next palette I want to talk about, um, I'll admit I am a little bit, again, disappointed with this because it is a brand that I like. I've got lots of their palettes. This one just did not meet my expectations. First of all, I have to keep the plastic in there because there are actual problems with the metallic formula. They just crumble. They are so fragile. Um, even when I first arrived them, they looked like they were coming out. So I've actually had to press it with my finger and I don't think they're great. I think the mattes, the quality is fine. I don't think it's the same as the original stacks, but the color story in here is, they, they're just too similar, the shades. Like you can't really create a variety of looks. And the reason why I bought this was, it was kind of like a consolation prize because at the time the Gemini palette was out of stock and I was like, okay, well, I'm gonna get this palette then because everyone's talking about how great their you know, palettes are. I just fell into the hype. This experience tells me I shouldn't do that because I'm not happy with this palette. If I hadn't bought it, I think I would have been a lot happier. I mean, the quality itself isn't terrible. They're fine to work with. They're just too similar and the shimmer, there's problems with that. The crumbliness and everything, I don't like that. And I don't like, I don't like when my palettes get all messy like this because it really does not encourage me to use it. So yeah, that one's disappointing. So it's a few days later and literally the third time I'm trying to film this and I'm just crossing my fingers hoping that this time the mic is actually on and working because we've got a lot of palettes to talk through and frankly, I don't want to film this again for the fourth time. So basically I was up to palettes that I found just okay, average, maybe didn't meet my expectations for a number of reasons. The first one I wanna talk about is the Charlotte Tilbury Stars In Your Eyes palette. Now this, again, was another consolation prize. I didn't end up um, buying the Pillow Talk quad. I really wanted it, so I thought the shades in here looked somewhat similar and I thought that this could work in a similar way. Um, but what I realized is I don't really like palettes like this. The formula itself is okay, it's not terrible. It's not, I don't think, personally worth $90 or however much I paid for $100. But the reason why I don't think this is a fantastic palette is because it's too same same. It's too much of the same toned, mid tone shades. There's not enough depth with this palette as well. I like palettes that have a nice range of light shades, mid tone, and then deep shades. And this pretty much stops at a mid tone color. This doesn't create a very flattering eye look on me. I actually used this palette on my mum and I found that the look created was fine. I don't think it was terrible, but it definitely wasn't my favorite. And I think there are lots of brands that make shades of this color. I mean, they kind of seem a bit trendy now. Huda Beauty palette reminds me of this one. And I think if you're the kind of person that likes a simple look, you don't want to think too much about how you're gonna do your makeup and you don't necessarily wear much makeup, I think that this might be a good palette. But for me, I just found I wasn't reaching for it as much as I thought I would and I don't think the looks that I created were as flattering as I thought they'd be. Charlotte Tilbury obviously is a absolute genius with makeup and all of the tutorials she has, the models she uses, everything looks stunning on them. For me, this one, didn't quite meet my expectations, and so I think it's an okay palette. It's not, it's not terrible, but it's just not that great in my opinion. The next one I wanna talk about might surprise you, but this is actually a Pat McGrath palette. This is the Metamorphosis one, and it's the one that is pretty much all shimmers, and I don't like the metallics in here, I'll be honest. These two are from the Decadence palette, and these are the two shades from the Decadence palette that I find a struggle to use. I never reach for them and I'm trying to figure out ways to use them because I really don't wear silver and I don't wear yellow gold. Um, there's a couple, there's a bronze, there's a cooler toned gold and then there's a deepened kind of blackened purple. I think that's probably the most interesting shade in the entire palette but as a whole palette I just don't think this is very cohesive. Pat McGrath releases far too many palettes with golds in them. I just want different shades, different textures. Look, I knew what I was getting into when I bought this and I am somewhat of a Pat McGrath collector. So I do enjoy this palette aesthetically and I think formula wise, if I was going to go for a silver, I'd go for this silver, but I just don't really like the color story in here. If she continues to release palettes like this going forward, I'm not gonna buy them because 
there's too much repetition. There's nothing more to say. It's not, it's not a formula problem. It's a color story issue. The next part that I want to talk about, I am disappointed about because it is in collaboration with Violette, who is a, she's the global creative director, I believe, of Estee Lauder. She's got a channel here on YouTube and she is absolutely amazing. I love her editorial styles. I feel like even though they're quite simple, they're punchy, they look beautiful. And I do really enjoy the color story of this palette. What I don't particularly like is the actual formula of these eyeshadows. I find that they go on kind of patchy. Um, and yeah, I mean, they look strong, but they go on patchy. And I find that they fade incredibly fast. I can't remember how much I paid for this, honestly, but I don't think <sighs> it was worth it. Um, yeah, I would also have to say the packaging itself there's kind of like a hard plastic top that's been stuck on top and the rest is kind of like cheap cardboard. And I don't like the look of this personally. The front of this is also not, it's also not stuck on symmetrically. I, I noticed that when I look at this palette. So I don't know, the marketing images made this look like it looked more expensive than it actually feels. It feels really kind of cheap. And yeah, I'm not a huge fan of this palette. Actually, I wore it in one of my videos um, in my Lisa Eldridge one and it was right at the end of the day I mean my makeup did not look like that at the start of the day and it looked so faded So yeah, I don't necessarily think that these are my favorite blues at all It's kind of a pity because I really think that Violette is a incredibly talented Makeup artist. I don't feel like the formula is anything to rave about. It's not particularly great Especially for a brand of that caliber. I'd expect more from Estee Lauder and based on this I probably won't be purchasing any more Estee Lauder eyeshadows. So this year I purchased eight Suku quads Actually, no ten Suku quads and of those ten I'm gonna put these four in this category because I just Wasn't particularly inspired by the color story in here with Suku. It's kind of hard because I know the formula is good. They look really flattering on the eyes, especially for a uh, mature eye. Um, these shimmers don't emphasize texture or anything like that, but I feel like they're going down this path of really, really soft look. And I guess they've kind of been going there for a while, but I'm not 100% convinced about them. I believe all the ones I'm gonna talk about are limited edition, including this one here. The shadows themselves aren't terrible, but I just, I'm not particularly inspired by these ones and the looks I've created haven't been anything too special. They're a nice wearable look, I think, um, for someone that doesn't want to look uh, like you've got very, very heavy makeup on. They're a nice option. This is one that I got recently um, and I... I think they're just fine, you know? I feel like Suku this year didn't release as interesting eyeshadow quads as they did last year. I think the ones they released last year were better. And then this one, which is in 11, Fukakare. I butchered that, I'm running out of space, but yeah, I think they're trying to be a little bit more on trend with the reds and kind of like the deeper blues and things like that. I'm just not, like I said, I'm not 100% convinced about them. The formula's fine, but when they go on the eye, I just feel like it's just so, so, so. I've definitely got a soft spot for Suku and I will continue to use and love their products, but I just feel a little bit let down by what's been released this year. I wish that they would expand their permanent line rather than come up with so many limited edition things. And I wish they would bring back more mattes. There's too many shimmers. I don't really want a quad full of shimmers. I'm definitely not immune to anti-hauling some of my favorite brands. And again, if they continue to go down this path of a full shimmery quad, I am not buying any more. Okay, moving on to palettes that I like. And the majority of my palettes fall into this category, which I I'm very happy about because otherwise I would feel like I wasted a lot of money on makeup. And I'm gonna, again, start with Suku. I think these are nice palettes. These are from their 15th anniversary collection. And these were promoted by a Korean makeup artist, Pony, who's pretty big on YouTube here. Um, her style is totally different to the style of makeup that I do, but I really actually like it. And sometimes I am very inspired by her. These are two very nice monotone palettes. They're a little bit too soft for my liking, but I do like the looks that I've created with this. Another thing that I'm not a huge fan of in this palette are things like this, where it's got a cream shadow in here. I don't like palettes with cream and um, powders. 
I just find that they get dirty, it's already dirty and yucky. And so um, I'm not the biggest fan of that, but I do like the shades in here and I love creating a monotone look with these. I actually wouldn't mind if more brands did that and just had like smaller palettes, but of the same color family in there, different textures, you know, um, finishes. That would be really nice. Next palettes are these ones. This is the Arcure and the Paleo palette from Cleona Cosmetics, which is a Canadian brand. And I got these ages ago, but um, I haven't really talked about these on my channel. They actually arrived really late to me because if you didn't know, there were issues with pressing and so she pushed out, the owners pushed out the release, which I don't mind. I think they did a good job with communicating to people and I think they did offer a refund for people that didn't want to wait, which I did appreciate, but I did decide to wait for these. Each individual shade looks really nice, but I think the reason why I don't use these very much is because when I look at this palette, I am just, I kind of don't know what to do with this palette. And whenever I've used this, I've taken only a few shades from here. Like the other day I did a look with these two shades and then I added some glitter on top. And then the other day, actually the previous clip where I had my leaf earrings, I actually wore this in the crease. The weird thing about these shades is that what they look like in the pan, they turn out differently on the eyelid. They kind of oxidize in a weird way. Um, and that's just with the mattes I find. I don't feel like, unless you're a really, really creative person and you just really good with colors, you won't necessarily know what to do with this palette. Again, with this one, I find that this one is slightly easy to use. The other day I created looks with, again, just these two shades. And I find that when I reach for these palettes, I'm only taking a few shades from them because I'm just a little bit confused as to what to do. I don't know if you find that, if you've got these palettes, do you feel like you have to rack your brain around trying to come up with a look, a cohesive look? I think they put so much work into like hand making each of these, so I do think these are really something that I will treasure. But yeah, I, I don't find myself reaching for these a whole ton because of the color story and the way it's arranged inside. I look at this and I'm just like, which colors go with which shades? I don't know. Moving on, we've got the Bronze Ambition palette from Pat McGrath. I think this is a nice warm toned palette. It's got, again, Pat McGrath loves to put these kind of shades in here, bronzy type of shades. There's one nice matte in here. I really like this matte, but I just think this is one of my lower ranked Pat McGrath palettes because it's nothing super revolutionary. The formula is nice, but it's just a brown palette. It's just a warm tone brown palette. What more can I say about this? <laughs> Next palette I ranked is the Pat McGrath La Vie en Rose palette. I like the fact that, that she's gone a bit more bold with the color story in here, but these shades are just not ones I reach for a whole ton. That's purely why I've ranked it here. I don't think it's bad at all. It's just, I don't reach for it. I need to reach for this. I think this shade is gorgeous. If I'm not mistaken, this shade is Pale Fire. And it's a really gorgeous dual chrome. I think this is, would be a really nice one and done shade, I feel. Even as a highlighter, maybe. But yeah, I just don't reach this palette. I know my sister adores it though. So I don't think it's a quality thing. It's a, I don't use it because the colors are out of my comfort zone kind of thing. I've also ranked the Dark Star Subliminal palette. This is the blue one, the mini that came out not too long ago. I absolutely adore this shade. This shade is gorgeous. When I go for this palette, this is the shade I use. The rest, I can take it or leave it. I wish that this palette was full of blues rather than another gold, another champagne. I just, why? And then gray, I don't use gray. I'll insert some photos of looks that I've done in here so you can see the looks I've created with it. I do like this palette, but purely because of this shade, I've. This is why this is above the La Vie en Rose palette. I really, I really love kind of a bluey purple shade. As you can see, when you move this, you can sort of see that shift to it. I think it's gorgeous. <laughs> Joey's come to help rank palettes. The next one is the Chanel Quad. I know some of you will be surprised that I have it and I feel like I've kept it a secret that I've gotten it because I said in my anti haul that I wouldn't buy it. But six months later, I was still thinking about it. I had seen so many people, well, not so many people, okay. I saw Mel Thompson talk about how awesome it was. And Chanel is one of those brands that is not really on my radar because I've tried Chanel actually before and I never really liked them. But this palette is a good one. And I feel like for Chanel, this is actually an adventurous palette because it's actually got some interesting colors in here, like the blue and the green, mainly those two shades. If you didn't have those two, it'd be kind of a boring palette. 
but because of these two shades, I think they're really nice. And I have used this for a few looks and I really like the end result with it. So I do think that this is a good Chanel quad and I hope that they continue with this formula because I think that this is a good one. Next palette I want to talk about is this one from the MAC Jeremy Scott collaboration that came out earlier this year. I bought this on Selfridges um, at a good price. I wouldn't pay however much they asked for it in Australia. But I like the look of this. I know some people think this is ridiculously large. It is. It is ridiculously large. But I like it. I like the theme of it. And I think um, they've done a really good job making this look like a boom box. I know a lot of people didn't necessarily like this palette because the pigmentation was not fantastic. But when it comes to colorful eyeshadows, sometimes buildable is better. And these are definitely easy to work with. This is a nice collector's item and I have created 10 looks with it and I did enjoy using it. So I think the fact that it's got so many varieties of shades, um, it's something that I could see myself traveling with. I know it's monstrously big again, but I feel like I could see myself traveling with this. I like the color story in here. I like the way it's arranged. I think that it's got a great mirror in here um, and I like the looks I've created. That's, that's the main thing. The next couple of palettes I want to talk about are these ones from Huda Beauty and I feel like this is my dirty little secret because I know Huda Beauty is such a controversial brand, but she has created some great palettes. I absolutely love the concept of these eyeshadows. Um, these are based on different precious stones. You've got Emerald Obsessions, Amethyst Obsessions, Sapphire, Topaz, Ruby, and they're all of the same color family. And I love that. I like that they're small, they're compact. They've got a mixture of shades, matte, satin, shimmery. And I feel like I've created gorgeous looks every time I've used them. This shade from the Ruby Sessions is a gorgeous one and done shade. It's beautiful, I wore it the other day. I think brands should do more of this type of thing. Small palettes, more succinct color story, um, rather than all, you know, all brown with a pop of blue. I like that this is an all blue palette with a pop of kind of green. I like that, I really like that. I think that she's done a great job and I do enjoy these. These also wear really well on my eyelids, which I didn't expect because a lot of eyeshadows crease on me. This works, so really happy with these. Next palettes I wanna talk about are these ones from Suku. These ones I feel like are the better ones that they were released. This color stories in here are a little bit more interesting. We've got this one, which is a limited edition one in 117 Natsuka Sumi. I should just not pronounce this at all. I wasn't gonna get this, but I did in the end and I'm glad I did. I hate using the word wearable, but I feel like this is a more wearable or more conservative version, softer version of this palette. The pebbles on here are just a little bit more muted, the pink more muted, and it's got that gold again. So honestly, it actually really does remind me of the Pat McGrath Mini. Similar color stories. The tones are different, obviously, and the intensities are different, but I really like the look that I get out of this palette. I'm not a kind of person that wears a lot of pinks and purples, so I think this is really nice. Then we've got this one, which is the Suku 121 palette. This was also a limited edition palette and this has got a matte black and I find that this is a really good matte black. I think this is a really nice smoky eye palette and I like kind of the pop of coral in here. I find it kind of strange that Suku hasn't released a matte black before that I know of in a quad. So I do like that one and I do think that Suku makes some really nice mattes. And then we've got this one which is the 122 palette. And again, I think this is limited edition and I love that pop of vibrant orange. Um, it is... It looks like a matte in the pan, but I would say it's more of a satin or pearly finish. And the rest are all kind of warm tones. And I think that this is quite a nice quad worn together. So yeah, these are my favorite ones that were released this year. Next we have the Makeup Monsters Dragon Child Palette. This is now sold on the Menagerie Cosmetics website because they have rebranded. And I think the shades in here are really fun. It's definitely, again, one of those palettes that I have to rack my brain with how to create a look. And when I go for this palette, I tend to just use one or two shades. I don't tend to wear like this whole row together or this whole row or the columns because I find that, I don't know why I haven't. I mean, I could try, but I just don't necessarily feel like I could create a cohesive look with like these three shades all together. They're pigmented and they don't kind of blend into a weird shade, which I find with some of the Cleona mattes. Um, they're nice. I haven't found the need to buy the other palette from Menagerie because, again, I just find that this is not necessarily the most cohesive palette when I look at it. I definitely think that unique shades to my collection, like this really interesting teal, you know, periwinkle, purple, 
um, this gorgeous forest green. Because of the color story, I don't find I reach for it a whole ton. This to me is an accent palette rather than a all-in-one palette. Okay, next one is the Creepy Cute Palette from Strobe Cosmetics. This is actually my first pastel palette. I have pastels as singles and I just find that I never reach for them, but I definitely find that out of the pastels I have, these are really nice. Um, they go nicely on the eyelid. I haven't really seen many people with deeper skin tones use this palette. So I'm not sure how it work on deeper skin tones. They've definitely got that punch of color um, to them. And I found that the look that I created was, was really pretty. I do find that I have to build it up a bit, but I do think I'm, I'm pretty happy with the pigmentation on here, especially for a pastel palette where I, in the past, pastels that I've used can be really, really not great, really chalky, you know, not show up on the eyelid at all. These ones do show up nicely on my eyelid and they blend well and they build well. It's definitely not my go-to palette because I don't wear pastels on the daily, but I think it's it's a really good pastel palette to my collection. And it's something, again, that I don't really have. So I felt like this is a good one. And I'd be interested to pick up the Divinity palette as well. I haven't, and I'm not sure if I, I necessarily will, but I do like the quality. I also have some of their singles and I really do enjoy them. So I think the Strobe Cosmetics um, do make a nice eyeshadow formula. So we're moving into the top 10 now and these palettes I'm really happy with. The first one is the Gemini palette from Melt Cosmetics. I think this is an absolutely stunning palette in terms of the color story. I think that it's a really nice grungy green, dirty green palette. It's got some nice browns, a selection of shimmers, which I'm not the biggest fan of. I think the shimmers in the palettes they've got an issue with because they're crumbly and they're, I feel like they're going to fall out. So I'm, I'm very careful with this palette and I do keep the plastic sleeve on it which I usually throw away for most of my palettes. But the looks that I've created with this, I've enjoyed it so much. Um, I think this is fantastic. I think this should be permanent. I think it is permanent now. If it's not, I feel like this should definitely be a permanent palette because I think the, the colors in here are nice. And I, I do think that Melt, besides the 27 palette, do color stories really well. The formula, I feel, isn't as good as the stacks, but I still think it is nice. I think this is a stunning palette. Next one might surprise you because I did criticize it a lot in my video and I still do think that this works best in a certain way but for my use I actually really like this and this is the Colored Rain Vivid Brights. Vivid Pigments, sorry. I know a lot of people will think why am I even ranking this top 10? I like to use these as liners and that's why. I won't use these as all over the lid shade. I feel like they blend weird. Some of them, most of them do. Um, but I think that because they're so pigmented, I don't need to go in with my Inglot Duraline and mix, you know, an eyeshadow to create a really nice opaque line. These do it for me. So I really enjoy these um, for that purpose. And these do add something unique to my collection. I know these are actually singles, but they've got a palette now. So I am going to include this in this list. So I've got one more Suku quad to talk about. And this is one I purchased this year, but it has been released for many years. This is the Suku blend color eyeshadow in Kukadama and this is a deep it, it's a green palette really it, but it's kind of like a smoky green palette I think the look created with this is stunning now when I say I wish Suku would go back to its roots I'm talking about these older palettes where they've got two mattes here and then two more satin shades I love their old quads and this is part of their old line. I do believe that you can still get this on the Selfridges website, um, but I'm not sure if they're available in stores anymore. I don't think so because they have since reformulated, rebranded, they're not the same. Um, and I just, I love their old quads. They will always be my favorite over the newer stuff, but unfortunately they're going down that path. So. I'm really glad to have gotten my hands on this. So this is number six on my list. This is the Dose of Colors I Love Sarah E palette. I think this is a great compact palette. You've got some nice mattes and some gorgeous pops of color, some more wearable ones. So you can create kind of a more bold look or a more soft look if you want. And I think this is really versatile. I took it with me to Japan. I wore it quite a lot. And since then I have really enjoyed it. I do like the Dose of Colors formula, so this is a really nice palette. I am definitely one of those people that gears towards smaller palettes. These days when I just want to put the makeup on my face real quick, I don't want to think so hard about what color story I'm going to create on my eyelid. That's why I like palettes like these, and I think that it's, she's done a really great job. I also like the fact that it's got plants on here. Yes, 
plants. I'm a plant lover, as you can tell. So I love that it's got like some monstera leaves and some Kensha palms. I think, I think it's a nice touch. I really like the packaging. Number five. Number five is my Pat McGrath Bronze Temptation palette. You've got some, the special shades, which I love, and then some nice mattes. I think this is a nice addition to her mothership range because she hasn't really got um, reds and rose golds and things like that. It's not my favorite mothership palette, but I think that it's a nice color story in here. And I love that there are special shades in here because those are the shades that I think are the most interesting. But I also like the mattes as well. Number four on my list is the Grand Pro by Viseart. I think this is a good palette. I like the shimmers in here. I think they're a lot nicer than their existing shimmers because they're a more pigmented formula and they're kind of more on trend as to what is popular nowadays, which is kind of that more metallic sheen to the eye. I took this when I was traveling. My, I did my road trip. I'll put my vlog in the cards if you want to see me. <laughs> going about life and I took this along. I really enjoyed it because I feel like I can get such a variety of looks with it. I took this along with my Grand Pro 1 and I think the shimmers in here are really nice. I think this is a great palette. If you were on a budget, I wouldn't be recommending this one straight away because it is expensive. Probably my favorite shade would be this one right here. And again, I'm a sucker for these type of shades. I feel like this is my favorite shade of the year. Like I said previously, I'm not usually a fan of a big eyeshadow palette, but I do think this is a good one and I will probably be taking it. I don't travel very much. I'll be honest. I don't travel very much now a days. I used to travel a lot. If I was single and traveling a lot, this is a palette I would take. I'm glad that Viseart is doing something different. I feel like a lot of their releases have been hit and miss of late, but I think this is a good one. Number three is this Pat McGrath mini and this is in Bronze Temptation. I think this is a fantastic mini. It's definitely my favorite of all the ones that she's released so far. I just love, love, love the color story in here. Love this green. You'd think I'm wearing it today. I'm actually not, but <laughs> love this green. I love all the shades in here. Even this shade, which looks like this is like the most boring shade ever, this shade. It actually has this red undertone to it and it's actually really flattering on the eye as a one and done shade. This is a gorgeous red. Again, it's a duochrome. It's got that interesting reflect to it. I like these shades and I like this palette. I think the looks created from here are really nice. I just enjoy the color story. I like the formula and I love this red, red packaging. Okay, one that came out at the start of this year and it is limited edition. It's part of my Mother of all Project Pans project. This is the Decadence palette from Pat McGrath. I love this palette. I know a lot of people. I've been watching people rank their eyeshadow palettes from Pat McGrath and I know this tends to fall on the lower side of the list because it hasn't got the special shades and blah, blah, blah. But I think this is a fantastic metallic palette, a fantastic accent palette. I find it so easy to use. Even you can use shades just as an all over the eyeshadow, sheer it out and it looks gorgeous. I just love it. I think this palette is a fantastic palette and I wish it was permanent because I think that it's a beautiful, beautiful palette. And I have been enjoying using this in my project pan. The only shades I don't particularly gravitate to are these two shades, which are also in one of the mini ones that I talked about earlier. Not a huge fan of these two shades. I could take them and leave them, honestly. I'm, I really love the other shades. This is one of my favorite shades of all time. It's so punchy, it's so pigmented. I do get bored of a lot of palettes, I'll be honest, but this one I have really been enjoying every time I reach for it. So we are down to number one. This was so hard to decide because I bought a lot of palettes this year, but this is a part that I've been reaching for so much. I absolutely adore the eyeshadow looks I've come up with using this palette. I love the shades in here. I like the formula and that is the Friendcation palette from Dress of Colors. This is a collaboration with Desi and Katie. I think this is a stunning palette. It's got great mattes and stunning, beautiful shimmers. I think this is one of my favorite shades this year. Like I talked about before, I'm a sucker for these shades, but this one is probably my most favorite, blue to purple. This Olive metallic green is so beautiful. And I saw Lauren May Beauty create a look with it as well and it just looks stunning. Look, there is a bit of fallout with this palette. 
Um, it's not perfect. I'm not a huge fan necessarily of the packaging, but I think it's a really cohesive palette. And I, I think my favorite look that I created this whole entire year has been with this palette. So that is why I'm ranking this as my absolute favorite palette purchase of 2018. So that's it, that's that's all the palettes ranked. Oh my gosh, this was such a hard task. I'm so glad I've just finished doing this because I feel like I've got a weight lifted off my shoulder. I think that this was a really fun way to just recap on all the palettes that I purchased this year because it's a lot. It's excessive. I have an eyeshadow problem, I know. And um, yeah, but this was a really fun challenge. I would be so interested to see how other people rank their palettes. If you want to do this, I encourage you to. I would totally watch it. Please let me know if you do. If you don't have a YouTube channel, I would like to know what your favorite palette that you purchased this year is and what's your least favorite. Anyway, if you want to see more of my face, please subscribe and I hope to catch you next one. Thanks for watching.